The word monopoly has lost a lot of its meaning these days, particularly in the world of video games. Like, it seems like whenever anyone buys anything at all, people cry monopoly. Like, oh, Microsoft wants to buy Activision. Monopoly! Apple makes a policy on their own storefront. Monopoly! Board game that takes four months to finish and ends friendships. Monopoly! But if there's one place in gaming you don't really hear a lot about monopolies, it's the PC gaming market. Because one of the things people love about the PC market is the fact that it's extremely third-party driven, and there's a ton of competition happening within the platform itself, with things like different digital storefronts and various hardware families. The only time you hear about monopolies on PC is when people are talking about game providers, and the sometimes dirty tactics used by some of them to artificially pull people onto their platform instead of someone else's. Because, you know, the more people you have actively using your launcher, the easier it is to sell them more games on that launcher and make money off of them. And it's for that exact reason why the PC's digital marketplace is so much cheaper and so much better than anything you'll find on the consoles, where there's, you know, one digital storefront and keys are much harder to get your hands on at any significant discount. There's definitely a key marketplace on the consoles, and it's certainly much better than it once was, but it's nothing compared to what's on the PC because of the lack of official digital game stores. Some launchers like the Epic Game Store and GOG have done their best to break through the dominance that Steam has always had in this department, and GOG has been doing pretty well actually, but others like the Epic Game Store have failed, largely, because of a myriad of reasons. First of all, the Epic Game Store is extremely barren in features, and it has a painfully dishonest user review system, where players are picked at random to review games that they own, but only after they've played it for a while, which is flippin' stupid, because obviously if someone's been playing a game for more than the mandated amount of time, they're more likely to be enjoying it, and thus the user score gets artificially inflated, so they can sell more copies of the game. It's so stupid. And on top of that, Epic has had a ton of security issues over the years, and they also have a really annoying habit of paying publishers to get exclusivity over Steam, so that way they can artificially pull people away from Steam instead of just putting that money towards making the platform better to organically pull the people from Steam. And it's just super, super obnoxious, and that's actually turned a lot of people off to using it at all, myself included. I'm one of the annoying PC elitists who still has never bought a game off the Epic Game Store because I'm an asshole with soapboxes to stand on. Some have tried to argue that Steam is a monopoly in the PC gaming space, or that it's impossible for non-Steam games to compete, despite the fact that this is completely untrue and gets proven untrue multiple times a year, it seems. I mean, other platforms could fix their issues in an afternoon, they just choose not to. And it's not like a game has to be on Steam for it to make it big on PC. League of Legends, Valorant, World of Warcraft, Overwatch, Fortnite, Rocket League, StarCraft, Call of Duty for the longest time, Apex Legends for the longest time, like these all existed perfectly fine without any help from Steam. Obviously that doesn't forgive the sins of other PC platforms compared to Steam, and it's also not to say Steam is perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but my big thesis that I'm trying to get to here before we get into the meat of this video is that Steam does not have any legitimate monopoly in the PC market, nor does it have anything making it appealing that other platforms couldn't have if they simply chose to have them. And that brings us to today's subject. I saw this tweet the, the other day, day, and I honestly had to take a second to pick my jawbone and teeth up off the floor afterwards because I'm amazed that something this stupid could be juiced this hard and for this long. So this is a promoted tweet by Will Butcher. It says, Use Steam? You could be entitled to hundreds or even thousands in compensation for Valve's illegal monopoly. It takes just minutes to find out if you are eligible to file a claim. Attorney advertisement by Butcher Law PLLC. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome. And again, this tweet is from June 8th. It's been viewed 3.2 million times thanks to the Twitter promoted system. And I saw it on July 9th. So this thing's been going for a while. And first red flag is that replies are turned off because nothing says this is not a scam, like trying to keep people on social media from talking about it. But going back to this initial tweet, at first glance, this may seem like a pretty flippin' great opportunity for you to make some money, huh? You make, make some money off a lawsuit, off of fucking Valve's stupid illegal monopoly thing. Until you think about the premise of this tweet for 30 seconds and realize that this makes absolutely no fucking sense. And this alleged lawyer is either completely incompetent or grossly malicious. But before we go any further into the problems with this tweet and the concept of this tweet itself, let's take a deeper dive into the man behind it. So Mr. Game and Laws from New York, he is a verified Twitter user with 128 followers. For comparison, I am a filthy pleb not verified and have more than three times his following. But also take another look at the engagement on this tweet about the lawsuit. 3.2 million views. 1,300 likes, 1,300 bookmarks, that kind of engagement? 
on an account this small, that's already kind of suspicious as to what your intentions here are. I feel like she may not be here for the right reasons. To me, this just kind of sounds like someone spent all their money on V-Bucks during law school and now has to figure out how to convert them back to actual money. But let's just dissect this piece by piece, and that way when you see this stupid tweet on your timeline in the future, you know it's absolute bullshit, and it's made by a Twitter account that I honestly really hope does not correlate to a real person. So let's dissect this piece of shit. So the attached link in this tweet goes to the page for Butcher Law Firm that looks like someone made it in Microsoft Paint, and it has a giant form for you to fill out and get in on the lawsuit mentioned in the tweet. One of their main tabs on the top right corner is the Steam Antitrust case, and when you go to that page, you have another painfully amateurish display, but this time it has a video that I legitimately thought was from a high school class project. Like, look, look at this. Is this fucking Bugsy Malone? Am I waiting in line to watch guys and dolls at the local middle school? Like, what is this lighting? Why do you look like a 15-year-old trying too hard on a job interview? And like, why does your suit look so goddamn cheap? Oh my god, like, I don't even know what's going on with the suit. It just looks cheap. Like, I would never be able to tell you the difference between different kinds of suits. That's just not my world. Like, oh, hey bro, I got my new fucking Brooks Brothers and I like it way more than my Armani. Like, dude, I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. And yet, I can still tell you with absolute certainty that the suit you're wearing looks like shit. Well, I suggest you let that one marinate. But let's just watch this thing. Let's just see what Mickey Two Fist has here to say about the Steam antitrust case. Hi, it's Will from Booker Law. I wanted to briefly explain Steam's anti-competitive conduct and why you as a consumer could be entitled to compensation. So I, as a consumer, could be entitled to compensation because of Steam's anti-competitive conduct. It's that simple. Steam is the most popular digital PC games launcher and storefront, therefore, Valve is being anti-competitive. Like, dude, I'm not even close to being a lawyer, and I know this is nonsense. When a developer, that's somebody who makes PC games, sells their game on the Steam platform, Steam requires that that developer not charge a cheaper price anywhere else. Okay, how is that anti-competitive? Also, fun fact, I saw a study recently that was trying to see if the Epic Games Store revenue split actually made a difference with the way publishers price their games, and what they found was that the overwhelming majority of the time, it doesn't. Hi, uh, Future Joe from the editing booth. I could have worded this part a little better, so let me elaborate. Lawyer man here makes the argument that if Steam is guaranteed to have the lowest market price for a particular game, or at least tied with lowest market price, because obviously if the game launches on the same price as Steam and Epic Games Store, the lowest price is still technically on Steam. But Lawyer Man makes the argument here that if Steam is guaranteed to have the lowest market price, that means the consumer is being taken advantage of and Valve is being anti-competitive. However, the study I brought up with EGS and console game prices in response to this was to highlight the fact that there is no evidence to support that his implication is true, because if Steam didn't demand having the lowest market price, there's little to no evidence that publishers would price games any lower for the consumer anyways. The study I referenced proved that the overwhelming majority of the time, games Games that release on both, you know, Epic Game Store and the console marketplaces are being priced the exact same despite EGS offering a larger cut of the revenue to the publisher, so the point that Lawyer Man is trying to make about Steam preventing lower prices to the consumer simply is not backed up by anything. His entire case here is based off a hypothetical that doesn't seem to even exist. Just wanted to elaborate on that to make my point is as clear as possible. Okay, sorry. Continue. Most publishers are pricing games the exact same on consoles and Epic Game Store despite Epic Game Store taking a much smaller cut of the revenue. So it kind of throws a wrench into your suggestion here that companies would price their games lower on EGS than Steam if Steam didn't have this policy, because it's not happening elsewhere. According to this study, despite the Epic Game Store giving the publisher more money per sale, the games were still largely being sold at the same price as the console version. And if the publisher is making more money per copy, you would think that those savings would be passed on to the consumer, which is the whole argument for the Epic Game Store and is going to be the whole argument of your entire lawsuit here. But according to this study, that's not even the case. In the overwhelming majority of instances like this, those savings are not being passed on to the consumer. But okay, you say that Steam requires their version of the game to be the lowest price available on the PC. Fair enough, if true. But also, if true, what evidence do you have that this is actually anti-competitive when it's been established that platforms don't really change game prices to compensate for larger revenue cuts when not selling on Steam? You're also going to have a really hard time arguing why it's anti-competitive 
that Steam demands to be at least tied with the lowest price. This policy, again, if true the way you present it, does not stop publishers from releasing games at the same price on Steam and somewhere else. So the point you're alluding to here really doesn't make much sense when you get down to it. But let's just keep going. That means that whatever price is set on the Steam platform is the same price that's set across the entire market. Is it? The price on Steam is the same price as the Xbox Store, or the PlayStation Store, or even the Epic Games Store? Also, if you know anything about the PC gaming market, you know that market price a lot of the time doesn't mean the price that you pay. Sales are a big part of the market here, and so is the secondhand key marketplace. That stifles competition. Yeah, no. Other launchers could be doing exactly what Steam is doing, they're just choosing not to. Epic Games could make their storefront and launcher more like Steam, but they won't. Uplay could improve its functionality to make themselves more appealing to the people on Steam, but they won't. Nothing about the way Steam runs its business is debilitating to other PC platforms, and any gap between Steam and the other platforms is solely of the platform's making, not Steam's. Although I'm still very curious to hear how any of this means anyone is entitled to compensation once they give you their information. It means that when a competitor emerges, they can't compete on price. The price tag isn't the only thing a PC gamer is looking at when they're assessing the situation, you pleb. You said it yourself, there's nothing stopping publishers from releasing games on other platforms at the same price as Steam. The problem is that those other platforms are complete garbage, and that's no one's fault but their own. Ultimately, that means you as a consumer pay more money. This guy really thinks Steam makes people pay more money than necessary. <laughs> That conduct's illegal under federal antitrust law, and you could be entitled to something called treble damages. Treble damages, a term that indicates a statute exists to award a prevailing plaintiff up to three times actual or compensatory damages. I hope that's how you pronounce that. <laughs> Examples of treble cases, if someone wrongfully sold someone a tool that caused property damage that resulted in $500 compensation, the victim could seek additive treble damage of $1,500. So... This is not at all applicable to the situation you described. Again, the only thing that's happening here is Valve beat the competition and the competition refuses to adapt. That is literally all that's going on. This would have been explained to you if you opened the replies to the tweet, but I'm sure you're just a really busy lawyer with lots of clients, so why would you even bother acting like you were going to be honest? That means you could recover up to triple the amount you overpaid as a result of Steam's anti-competitive conduct. But in order for this to actually be a thing, you'd have to have records of every single game ever released and purchased on Steam, and have a detailed log of what the market price of those games was at all times, and then somehow also have a detailed log of what the market price would have been on other platforms for that game if Steam didn't demand on being at least tied for the lowest price on the market. And I'm not a lawyer, but that sounds impossible. It only takes a few minutes to find out if you're eligible, so complete the form above and let's get started. Yeah, okay, um, you're either completely clueless as to how this actually works, which is a little embarrassing because you're apparently a lawyer and I'm just a dude with Google, or you're deliberately trying to take people's information. And I usually try to live by the rule of not attributing to malice what can be explained by stupidity, but when you close the comments like this and push the tweet this hard and Twitter promoted, like, I just can't help but wonder how intentional all of this actually is. But now that we're done with the video, let's go back to the website and the form that you're supposed to fill out. I'm not giving you my information, you fucking weirdo. But my favorite part about this whole thing is the promoted tweet that started the whole journey. That tweet that turned off replies so no one would be able to point out how fucking stupid it was. But if you go to the quote tweets, it's not like people don't see right through you. Yeah, while I was editing this video and like I was going back to get all the screenshots of the quote tweets, uh, quote tweets were made unavailable. <laughs> like... Uh, they're gone. They were here this morning, and now they're gone. So, uh, good golly gosh, I, uh, can't imagine why that happened. So I think I've made my point rather clear about this being, a uh, fucking bullshit. One way or another, intentional or not, this lawsuit is not going to get you anything. There is no actual ground for this case to exist in the first place, and if they're this adamant about silencing criticism while taking personal information, I could very easily be convinced that there is an ulterior motive. This goes without saying, but people on the internet will always be around to take advantage of the stupids, and while in this case it's honestly unclear if this is malicious or just ignorant, 
but it needs to be documented because holy shit, you're either a snake or completely unfit to be a lawyer. Toodles.